Hey everybody, it's Alex with Engineering Applied. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the thread tool found in Autodesk Inventor. If you want more easy to understand and practical content made by an experienced engineer like myself, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any helpful content like this in the future. If you're looking for a specific function, check the description for timestamps. And if you don't find what you're looking for in this video, make sure you check out the other videos in the Autodesk Inventor series playlist because I know you'll find exactly what you need there. Let's get started. Okay, so to teach you the thread tool, I went ahead and modeled up uh, two different parts here. The first one on the left is a hex nut uh, with no threads on the inside. And on the right side, I have a socket head screw with no threads on the outside of the shank. So um, the whole objective here is we're going to apply threads in the two main uh, different ways. And that includes uh, applying it to an interior face and an exterior face. Okay, so starting with the nut on the left, all we have to do is make sure that we're in the 3D model tab and we have some 3D geometry selected. So I'll go ahead and maximize this window so we're only looking at one thing at a time here. So in our model, we wanna go up to the modify section and go to thread. And when we click on thread, we get a little pop-up dialog box. Now in this box, it operates very similarly to the extrude function, revolve function, and some of those other uh, geometry creation tools. So. If we move along the top here, we have our properties tab. Okay. So our properties tab has this little X here. If we click that, it exits from the tool. Uh, let's go back into that. We have this little plus sign so we can grab some additional menus. Okay. So we have additional selections under this tab here. Moving over to the right, we have our advanced settings menu. Okay. Within this menu, we have two main options. Our first option is to hide the presets menu. This right here is our presets menu. So when I click that, it goes away. We can reveal that by clicking on this again and removing that check mark. Okay, so that presets menu comes back. Now, our second option is single enter to finish command. So essentially all this means is when this is enabled, I can change a, you know, a value here. So let's actually pick up a face first. Okay, I'm going to change this to a quarter of an inch. Okay, now when I hit enter once, it's going to finish the command and apply those changes I've made. Now, if we go back, and I do that same thing with that disabled. Okay, so if I just click that face again and I change that to 0.5, if I hit enter once, it does nothing. If I hit it a second time, then it closes out of the command and applies those changes. So um, that's just the difference between those two options there. Moving down from the advanced settings menu, uh, we have the name of this feature right here. And by default, it just starts out as thread. And I can actually change the name of this feature right here on the fly. So if I want to change this to the actual thread type, so quarter inch by 20, okay, I can do that here. And when I finish this feature and just verifying that everything looks good to me, I can hit OK. And on the left, you'll see quarter inch by 20. Um, so this is a really quick and easy way to rename various features within your model without having to go back and click on it within the model browser. So if you need to change the name after the fact, you can always hover over the feature, left click, and then left click again, and it'll allow you to change that. So maybe I want to add the word thread at the end. Um, so I can add that and then just press enter and then it'll go ahead and make that change for you. Okay, so let's actually go back a couple steps here. Go back into thread and let's take a look at this input geometry section. So here is where we select our face of interest. You'll see that we're ready to select a face with this little blue line designating on the bottom of that box there. So when I hover over this, it turns green. If that's not active, you won't see a blue line and we can't pick up that face. So to reactivate it, you just left click in that box. We'll select our face of interest. Okay, and it automatically applies the threads there. Now you can change your thread parameters, but because I sized my pilot hole in this way, the software knows that I'm trying to achieve a quarter inch by 20 thread. Now, if you're unsure of what pilot hole size to use, just check a drill and tap chart. You can find a ton of them for free online, or you can get a machinist calculator where you can enter the parameters of your thread and it'll tell you what type of drill bit you need and so on and so forth. Okay, so that is how you select your face of interest. Here, we can specify our various thread parameters. The top will allow us to select the thread type. So we have our drop down for our thread type. Here we have our thread size, 
our designation of the thread. So in this case, I want it to be quarter inch by 20. If you wanted to do a finer thread, you could certainly uh, select something like a quarter inch by 28. It just depends on uh, your particular design case. Okay, here we have our class designation our direction for our thread, so either left hand or right hand, okay? And that's the main parameter section for the thread type itself. Now, here is where we would actually control the depth of the thread and whether or not we wanna apply an offset to the thread itself. We click in this box and we can enter a number and that would set a blind depth for the thread. Or if we wanna always force the threads to go the entire depth or length of the face of interest, we can click this button here and it'll set full depth to on. Okay, so in this case, we actually want to do this because we don't want a partially threaded hex nut. Now, let's undo that and move over to our other model so we can take a look at how we use the offset option as well. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is select our face of interest. And depending on where you click along this face of interest, this will dictate where the threads begin. So if I click near the bottom, they start at the bottom. And if I click towards the top, they'll start at the top. This is where we actually want them to begin because we're creating a partially threaded fastener by inducing an offset here. So we wanna do an offset of 0.500, okay? And um, now we have our partially threaded fastener. And again, under our advanced property section, this is where we can either choose to display the threads in the model or not to display them. And this will just depend on how large your model is and um, the amount of computational resources you have to display this model. Moving down here on the bottom right hand portion of this box, we have the apply and create new thread. If I click this, it'll apply my changes, but keep this thread window open so I can continue working at an accelerated pace. So if you're doing multiple threaded uh, features, that's a very quick way to do that. Now let's take a look at presets. Presets are very simple to set up and um, it can be a very powerful tool for us to select very commonly used parameters without having to manually enter them over and over again. So uh, let's say for example that I commonly create fasteners with a one inch thread and a half inch offset, okay? All I have to do is go up to this little preset section hit this plus sign, it creates a new preset. And I can go ahead and rename this if I want. I can rename it to quarter inch by 20. Um, and we'll do by, I don't know, an inch with 0.5 offset. Okay, so you can get as specific or brief as you'd like in this section. Once you're done renaming it, um, you can click this little check mark and it'll save it for you. And if we click that drop down, now we have this available as a common preset. So again, if I commonly use these settings, this is a great way to access that. Now, if you move over to the right here, we have the preset settings menu. So if we click that, uh, we can save the current preset, rename it, delete it. You can change your sort order and so on and so forth. So if I want to delete a preset, um, you wanna make sure that the preset is selected first then you go into the settings menu and then you just hit delete current, okay? And it'll delete that preset from your menu. That's all for this segment of the Autodesk Inventor Part Creation Module, where we took a look at the thread tool. I really hope that you found this tutorial to be helpful and that you take what you've learned in this video and put it into practice so you can continue developing your skills as you go through these lessons. Also, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on notifications to stay up to date on future content that will absolutely help you reach your goals along your journey. And of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment or reach out via my website contact page and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn about or see on this channel. I really appreciate you stopping by and learning with me and I'll see you again soon.